Hey, what's up guys? Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and today is day 20 in our 30 tips in 30 days video series. Now, you may be familiar with using layer masks in Photoshop, but I'm not sure if you have ever used opacity masks in Illustrator before. Today, I'm going to show you how they work and how they can be of use to you right now. Alright guys, we are back in Illustrator once again and today I want to show you how to use opacity masks. And you may be wondering what that is, but it's actually uh, pretty simple and it's, you know, for those of you guys who are uh, familiar with layer masks in Photoshop, which we've been using a lot of, um, you'll, you'll get the idea. It's very similar to that. So all I'm going to do uh, to demonstrate this for you guys is uh, create a circle, which you can do just by pressing L on your keyboard holding down the shift key and dragging okay and then from there we're gonna create a box on top of it so go ahead and press M to get your marquee tool sorry not your marquee tool but your you know your box tool over here that you have the rectangle tool okay and then instead of using a solid black I'm gonna come down here and just make it a gradient and you'll see by default it just gives us this you know gradient from black to white but we can come over here and change the color from white to white and then select the left slider and change the opacity to zero so now it's a nice fade from uh, you know solid white to transparent but you can also change the angle which for now I'm just gonna put it 90 uh, to leave that there so you guys can see what I'm doing alright so it's kinda going from top to bottom and there's kinda this you know um, perceived light source coming from the top okay and you can even create another one if you want on top of it to push the fade even further and of course you can you know play with the positioning or the size of this however you like alright and you know you can also control the opacity of any of these shapes or gradients over here so we're just gonna lower that to about fifty percent so now I've got two gradients and a circle behind it so I'm gonna select both of the gradients and press command G to group them together and then I'm gonna select it once again and press command 2 on the keyboard to lock both of these shapes. Now when I click I'll have my my circle selected so go ahead and copy this layer by pressing command C okay and then command F will paste in front. Now the next thing we want to do is unlock those shapes that we locked so you can do that by coming up to the object menu and pressing unlock all or you can simply press command option 2 on your keyboard okay now before we go any further I just want to show you something really quick I'm just gonna create a, another shape just a random box here and I'm gonna move it to the back okay and now all I'm gonna do is fill this uh, shape with a color so you can see you know you have your shape but then you have both of these gradients you know showing through on top and that's not really what we want we want these gradients to be contained inside of this uh, circle here so the way that we do that is make sure that whatever shape or, or object that you want to use as your mask is in the front and select it. Hold down the shift key and then select your other shapes, in this case the gradient. And then over here you can select these two overlapping circles which are, you know, again the transparency in Illustrator. And you'll see that you have this option here called Make Mask. So once you do that, you just want to check off Invert Mask and there you go you'll see that you now have both of these gradients contained inside of this shape and you can still actually change the uh, size and positioning of these shapes if you want and you do that by clicking and then unlink these two layers alright so once you've done that you can come over here and you know move the gradient around within the shape so you kinda see how that works alright and real quick I'm gonna give you guys uh, one more example of how this could really come in handy. Um, let's just say you know you're creating a logo for somebody, right? And you have uh, maybe a nice bold font. I always go right for Helvetica in a in a pinch. Okay, so we're just gonna make some text here, make a copy of it, just holding down the Alt Option and Shift keys to drag it upwards, and then I'll make a copy for you. And again, let's do the same thing where we take you know make a gradient real quick same thing just going you know from from white 
to transparent. I'm going to make it negative 90 so that it kind of starts, you know, halfway through the letters and gives you that kind of uh, like Apple 2.0 look from back in the day. All right, but again, select the text, paste in front, and then we're going to bring a copy to the front so that it's, you know, in front of our gradient that we just created. And then again, select the transparency option and then choose make sure clip and invert mask are both checked off. Now if I put a solid color behind it, uh, just like we did before with the shape, you'll see that there's you know, no gradient kind of sticking out from behind these letters. However, if I release the mask, then there will be, okay? And again, you can unlink these layers and, and move the gradient around or, or make it larger, scale it, whatever you want to do, and then just make sure that you link it once again at the end. And you can also control the opacity of the gradient inside of those letters, you know, because you might want something that's just a little more subtle um, with less contrast. If you do try to move the gradient around while this is linked, it'll still be in the shape of your mask. So just remember to unlink those before you move anything around or make any uh, further adjustments. All right, and that's kind of uh, that's kind of it, guys. It's another example of how you can use um, opacity masks in Illustrator. Um, and it comes, you know, it definitely comes in handy, uh, especially when you're doing things like logos or, or trying to merge shapes and get, you know, some nice uh, shadows or highlights inside of certain shapes while keeping them out of others. So I hope that you found this tip useful. And if so, please do us a solid, give us a thumbs up, and sign up for our newsletter and let us know how we can help you design better. See you next time.